Sally, what the what the rules of engagement for Creative Mornings is? She said there are no rules. So I said, so what you're telling me is I could actually get on that stage Friday morning, April the 24th, and just sit there in silence for 20 minutes and, and just breathe. She's like, well, yeah, you could do that if you want to. I mean, we're going to be broadcasting this thing to a bunch of people who are probably interested in hearing you say something, but there are no rules, man. You can do what you want to do. So as I was getting on the flight to come here yesterday, I was thinking to myself, well, what should I do? Should I sit in silence for 20 minutes? I could do it as a lender of last resort, but I decided not to. I decided that I would um, try to use these 20 minutes um, and let the music speak probably more than, more than a more than I will as I tell this narrative. It is the morning. Um, good morning. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Sally. I'm going to speak about humility, which, if you know me, could be very, very laughable in and of itself. Um, just ask uh, my, 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 my colleague, Brian Satz, who's also a, a mutual friend of Sally's. So when Sally ran into Brian on the street, she said, oh, it's great. We got, we got John speaking at Creative Mornings. Oh, cool. I really love what you guys are doing. What's he talking about? Humility. He laughed. <laughs> he did this big belly laugh, and then I think he just walked away from Sally and didn't even say goodbye. <laughs> Which got me thinking, wow. Um, but not just wow. There's, there's, I think, how we like to think of ourselves, and then there's how we are perceived. Um, more often than not, those two are on opposite ends of the... Uh, uh, of the room, but but sometimes sometimes they dance closely together. Um, maybe we'll see if we can get some synergy happening uh, in the, over the next few minutes. Uh, if you would like, and I, I rarely have ever asked for crowd participation, but this is the morning, and I am a little tired, so I'm just going to ask for um, you to listen as 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 dutifully as you can, but. While you're listening, we're gonna we're gonna all do this. We're gonna, I've never done this before in my life, so this could be a complete, utter mess. But you know what? It's it's the morning, and I'm being creative, and we're gonna see if this works. Do you guys see my hand moving? Join him. Watch him. It doesn't even have to be louder than that. But lock into each other, right? Watch my hand. Just pay attention to everyone around you, and it'll be that easy. And this is exactly where we're going to stay. We're going to stay right there, all right? Is everybody focused? Okay. Give me water, big bell. Leave me dry, 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 dry. Any way you want it, I won't ask why. I won't ask why, won't ask why. I won't ask why, won't ask why. Any way you want it, I won't ask why. Welcome to the water, this is sort of what they made me for to deliver the babies, burning stages, if it amazes layman, we feed them the way that they came in, they say that the world is changing, well I am the lyricist, if it is proven that we exceed all of our differences, follow me hurriedly, John and Valerie currently came to make moves for you, this is the Neo Blues soldier, welcome to the water, welcome to the water, welcome to the water, welcome to the water. Give me water, baby, oh, leave me dry, 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 anywhere you want it, I won't ask why, I won't ask why, won't ask why, I won't ask why, won't ask why, anywhere you want it, I won't ask why. 
These are definitive remnants. When is it cool to make minutes of genesis? Rather not reminisce businesses now. Partner skies are limitless. Why is my nemesis? With time of my hands, I chose to apprise myself of wise sentences. Enveloped by old and masses, many of whom had died penniless. Apprentice to light and reason, intended to light and lead them. At minimum, add infinitum. Give me the water and teach me to swim again. Give me the water and teach me to swim again. Give me water, baby, or leave me dry, 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 dry. Any way you want it, I won't ask why. I won't ask why, won't ask why. I won't ask why, won't ask why. Any way you want it, I won't ask why. Give yourselves a round of applause. I, uh, I'm, I was born and raised in, in Brooklyn, New York, uh, Brownsville, Brooklyn, to be specific. And I, uh, I was, I felt like I was born blessed. I don't ever remember not feeling blessed as a kid, even though. I grew up in what was arguably a war zone in, in the 80s, but it didn't feel like that because I saw Brownsville, uh, at, at Brooklyn, as this community of love where it took a community to raise a community. So I always felt supported, um, which was pretty cool for me uh, because as long as I did what I was supposed to do academically, my mother uh, fostered this environment that uh, encouraged me to 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 uh, pursue as many extracurricular activities as um, as I wanted, but I had to step up academically in order to like learn how to paint or play an instrument or speak in a foreign language, which was fine by me. Um, and I ended up doing really really well academically and being a big fish in a, a, a very little pond. Getting plucked out of that fish, getting plucked out of that fish, getting plucked out of that pond, and and placed into an even larger um, body of metaphorical water. And I went to a prep school in New Hampshire um, for four years, Phillips Exeter Academy. And I was there with a bunch of other big fish. And I was no longer the obvious choice of valedictorian. I was no longer obvious choice of first chair as a violinist. I was no longer hot shit, right? I was brought down to size. And in fact, it was the end of my freshman year at Exeter when my academic counselor came to me rather, rather furtively, I think, um, in order to spare me the embarrassment, and suggested that maybe I consider not returning the next year because clearly I wasn't knocking it out of the park, which was so antithetical to my, my, the, the core of, of, of my being. Like, what? Are you talking to me? I'm a really, really smart kid. Like, the mere suggestion of not coming back here it would be disappointing for you. I mean, this was my attitude. <laughs> well, <laughs> I came back <laughs> again and again and again. And, and it was, a, it was a, I think that was my first, that was my first knocking down to, 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 to size. And it wasn't, it wasn't malicious. It wasn't that sort of like, schadenfreudic karmic payback that, 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 that I think you would either expect um, to receive or, or hope that, that, that someone as, as arrogant as I was would be the recipient of um, in due time. But it was just, it was, it was, it was earth shattering um, to, not, to not be as good as I, as I thought I was. But the beauty of not being as good as you think you are is that there's always room for improvement. Um, fast forward a number of years when I was on my hands and knees in federal prison and there was a guard who was standing in the doorway and he was chewing this big wad of tobacco. I know it sounds typical, you, you think that I'm painting this picture, I'm not. This is in rural Pennsylvania and I'm cleaning out his trash liner and he says, so forte, what's it like? That's a ba very bad accent. <laughs> he said it in a much better one, much more convincing. I said, what's what like? 
And he says, how does it feel going from being nominated for a Grammy to cleaning out my trash can? And I said, and I, this wasn't premeditated. And I, and I, I immediately thought back to um, sitting around this, this, this round table called the Harkness table, right? And we were reading the Canterbury Tales my freshman year at Exeter. And, and everyone in the Canterbury Tales, if, if you read it, I'll, I'll try to remind you. Everyone has a role, right? There's like a bishop, there's the vicar, there's the cobbler. But everyone has a motive. Everyone has an ulterior motive. And it's this sort of reflection of life, like no matter if you're a stockbroker or creative morning -er, um, just look around you, right? You, you, you question people's motives. But there was one person in, in, in the Canterbury Tale who had a, a, a job and a responsibility and a role and, and it was the person who cleaned out, it was the stable boy. And that was the one person who showed up every morning and every night and they did their job. And, 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 and they didn't do the job with arrogance and they didn't do it with unnecessary uh, servitude. They did the job because that was the job. They did the job because the, the job had to be done. So I, I turned and I, and, 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 and I looked at the CEO and I said, everyone's got a job to do. I said, right now, my job is to clean out your trash can. I don't think this is always going to be my job. Um, and I'm, I'm happy that, uh, that I was right. I know you've seen the breaking of a man. You've taken all you can as if the house we made was laid across the sand. Oh Lord, penalties for suffering can seem so hard. Dreaming the days when everything's so dark Tried to walk good, where does that road start? Show, I, John, thought exercise was sought out To advise and add on I changed the thinking you so proudly had on This mobilizing effort, it picks up from where the best of the best came and left it. The treasure of truth, I mix drinks within the booth. They can't be measured with youth. I break leaven with the seven and let whatever produce my past estrange the light. If change is right, you can say the judge killed me. And then I came to life, a newborn like a neophyte. Fruitful love from the tree of life. This is the letter. I don't need to write peace, see law, bless the stars. If I don't breathe tonight, if I don't save you from yourself, maybe the Lord might. What I envision is better steady, higher living. From this system, though some dudes might be dead already. I graduated from a school where the minds varied to hold the burden known to those that only time carries. This cherry blossom, a martial artist, studied the chi, written on gossamer, tutored by philosophers demonstrably. I deconstruct the subpar and put them back together like the monsters be. So how you want it? Obvious or subconsciously? If every man has a price, who sponsors me? We should do more than just drink responsibly. You see, even in the mountains, Lord, John was free. I know you've seen the breaking of a man. You've taken all you can as if the house we made was laid across the sand. Oh, Lord, penalties for suffering can seem so hard. Dreaming the days when everything's so dark Tried to walk good, where does that road start? Show As fate would have it, they would have me talking savage Like the average among us And not confined to the youngest I'm like the magical healer Slash masterful builder I know the riddle of steel Is in the hands of the wielder They tried to shatter my leader do bad to the breather for living page 27 from the bag of Vegeta. So when his time stopped, where he lay, read I'd rather be hated for what I am than loved for what I'm not. You can't subtract logic. I put tulips on his grave 
and waxed philosophic through the words he gave. Read my lips, it's a new day running and it ain't coming cause it's here for the taking. This has been years in the making. I spent years in a station waiting to make this entrance. I'm here to free the world, young star. What's your intention? This is warfare, youngin. The lightning is flashing now. Tune in and let's see what's happening now. One way or another, it's going down. And I know you've seen the breaking of a man. You've taken all you can as if the house we made was laid across the sand oh lord penalties for suffering can seem so hard dreaming the days when everything so dark tried to walk good where does that road start a show a show a show What time do I have? 10 minutes? That's good. Okay. Um, so the bio's out. If you read the bio, my bio, not the bio, but my bio. <laughs> like I live in the city. Which one? The city. The bio. My bio. Um, if, if you're here, I'm hoping that you, that, that, that you read the, at least the bold, the bold, um, commentary, so I don't have to dive into it because then it would take a little bit longer than 20 minutes. But assuming that that, that everyone's on the same page, Brownsville, Brooklyn, Phillips Exeter Academy, um, producing for people like the Fugees and working with artists like Michael Jackson and The Temptations, and then thinking I was above the law, taking a very, very calculated risk that um, meant I involved myself in a, a criminal enterprise. Um, convinced myself, compartmentalized my involvement in the crime as, well, I'm John Forte the rapper. If this house of cards should ever fall, well, everyone will know that I'm John Forte the rapper. I didn't even espouse uh, 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 certain certain c certain lifestyle choices in 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 my music before, uh, perhaps ironically enough, getting getting snarled up in in, in the mix. Um, and being on the other side of 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 a criminal justice system that until until I actually went to trial, I, I thought that we lived in a very, very fair and just um, society. Um, at least that's what I told myself because that that was my experience. And then, and then when I went to trial uh, in Houston, Texas, after after not actually being in Texas, but that was where the conspiracy began. Um, I remember our first days of of, of pretrial, and, and we asked for change of venue, we, 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 we filed a motion for change of venue, basically because I was arrested in Newark, New Jersey, when two couriers were returning from their, um, from their trip. And they came, uh, they came back with 14 kilograms of liquid cocaine, and I picked them up at Newark Airport, and that's where I was arrested. But because the trial, or because the conspiracy began in Texas, that's where we went to trial. So the juror of my peers, consisted of no one from Brooklyn, New York, um, and maybe one person of, of color. So when the prosecutor set up the, the argument, one of the first things that she said, she said, you know, Mr. Forte, he's gonna come down here with his city slicker friends, and, and they're gonna treat us like, 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 like backwood idiots. And I was like, no, no, that's not what I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do that at all. I don't even know you. But it was how the case was set up, and I, I'm not saying that that's why I lost because I was some city slicker in a in, in a in a in a southern town. No, um, but it was very very interesting the way that again, I was I was framed, I was positioned, I was described, and I think that you know when 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 I when I think of of, of Sally running into B Sats and saying, hey, this is what John is going to do at Creative Mornings, or the prosecutor saying. This is how I view 
John Forte. It's a very, very interesting dynamic when, you know, I think that we spend so much of our lives either creating art, media, words, dancing, uh, uh, I don't know, setting up families with, with, with business, whatever. Do, whatever we do, so much of what we do is a reflection of how we would like to be perceived. And I think that that's, I think that's pretty fair. Um, but more often than not, I think we, we end up finding ourselves having to explain ourselves. Well, no, that's not what I meant. Or, 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 or having to justify your actions. Um, and that's really, really tough, especially when you think that, when you think, of, when you, when you think more highly of yourself than perhaps others think of you. Um, so what is, what is this, 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 this thing, you know, this humility, this notion of humility? It's a concept that I believe that in and of itself, humility, absent a relative comparison, is pretty much an exercise in futility, right? Because humility for humility's sake is, 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 is really, I think, not a useful tool. But humility, in the, in, in, in the, in, in, when I compare it to not being the smartest or not needing to be the smartest guy in the room or not needing to be the best singer or not uh, having my, my, my future uh, guaranteed, uh, my success guaranteed. It's that, it's that self-correction, it's that tool of self-correction that I think is necessitated by the absence of guarantee because, because there's always that what if. There's always the what if I don't do the best job? Or what if, I, what, what, what if I do fall short? It gives me room. It gives me room to, to be better. It gives me room to grow as an artist. Um, and it also tells me that it's OK to not always have the best move. It's OK to not always have the answer. And much to Sally's point, knowing that I have so many shortcomings, it's really, really good to surround myself with people who can remind me what those shortcomings are. Um, and I can take that criticism humbly. Uh, and I can grow and I can learn from that. And that's not, again, that, that's not like a false sense of modesty. I think when you're good, when you knock it out of the park, you know what? It's all right to say, raise up your hand and say, you know what? I knocked that out of the park. Because all too often, we're not going to knock it out of the park. When you do, you know, you can raise your hand and say you knocked it out of the park. But also know that knocking it out of the park is not the norm. And that while you can say, hey, man, it's Friday morning, I knocked it out of the park. Saturday morning, you better be willing to <laughs> look around and, and give somebody else that, that praise. And that's the beauty of community. We can, we can spread love. That's the Brooklyn way. <laughs> <laughs> So now I'm at a point in my, in my life, in my career, where it's like every seven years, man, every seven years, every seven years, my, my, my world is just so shaken up. So here I am speaking to you guys about humility. And I don't have prepared notes. Really, this is a kind of thinking out, thinking out loud meditation. Because I, with all due respect, I see all of you as a reflection of myself and, and vice versa. Um, that's just how I connect. And, and I humbly stand before, sit before you as an artist who is still happily and sometimes maddingly and sometimes frustratingly trying to find my way. I ran into someone on the street the other, actually it was in the airport. And this guy was like, oh man, you look like John Forte. And I said, I am. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and he said, he said, are you still making music? And the and the question really shook me to my core, almost as if to say, well, I can't do anything else. Like, how could you possibly ask me if I'm doing anything else? This is what I do. And he said, um, I didn't say all that. I was like, I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we took like a selfie and I walked away. Um, but yeah. So in an era where I'm probably never going to sell as many records again as I did in the 90s, I have to be OK with that. And I probably won't have as big a platform as I, I did in the 90s. And I have to be OK with that. 
Because now, if I don't do this music for me, um, wherever it takes me, then, then, I, I, then I, 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 next time I see that guy in the airport, then I won't really have anything to tell him. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna do what I can do as long as I can do it, and 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 humbly try to find my, find my way and 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 my my place, especially in a sea of noise. There's so much noise out there, so much noise. This is not designed for you to dance to. Despite my disdain for semantics, I warn you in advance, this might veer somewhat on the pedantic. I don't write rhymes, I write ransoms, kidnap thoughts and demand answers. I believe neither in luck nor handouts for personal advances. Man is a funny creature. Damn, it's so funny that money's the one thing that make them go blind when they want to meet shit. You don't think I know what I crept upon? Haters ain't dead, they pledge instead. I heard a house down south, let it all hang out. Come one, come all from a lot to a small amount. Sigma, alpha, epsilon. Drop a bomb from the cheap seats, and I don't deep sleep. I don't speak Greek, not on my watch, not on my time, and not on this beat. If I don't get air, watch me, not mine. There's a plan afoot. Get yours. You know I got mine. You understand the chances I took. Do I look like I'm not ready? Do I look like I'm not ready? You're too slow to move, so your ego's so tall, it's top heavy. Keep my mouth shut, my notice up, my mind still, my lotus up. Who chose us? We chose us. Who chose us? I keep my mouth shut, my mind still, my lotus up, my notice up. Who chose us? Who chose us? We chose us. I. I'd say we're on to something new. Maybe it's a new day if you say let's go. I will follow you who there. I will follow you who there. Where the weary won't go. Where the tired can't speak And where the dawn is colored fair And I promise as real as am I will follow you who there I will follow you who there yeah. I will follow you who there Sing this song for our heart. Tell the world who we are. May the sun shine your light. I will never leave your side, your side, your side. This time we'll take our turn. The path was I was to learn the days we, we thought were poor and the steps we, we walked before. The soul was made to bear. I thought I saw you there. I will follow, follow you there. Yes, I will follow you there. Sing this song for our heart. Tell the world who we are. May the sun shine your light. I will never leave your side, your side, your side. Thank you. John, I checked out your interview on Combat Jack last year, and yeah. it was an amazing interview. And just your journey of being an artist, a student, and all this stuff. Uh, once you got out of prison, what was one thing that you probably took for granted? None of your business. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that now you you really don't you don't take for granted anymore. It's a great question, Raheem, is that your name? Thanks, Raheem. 
I, I don't take walking for granted. I think that when, before I went away, I was, um, I was definitely feeling myself. I was completely like, I, I was that dude in my own mind. And, um, and I remember that I, um, like the notion of, of, of being a pedestrian was, was almost like beneath me. I'm like, well, walk around, are you kidding me? I know it sounds really, really crazy, but that's, you know, it's, it, it existed. Um, and when I came home uh, after, you know, seven plus years in prison, I remember the first morning waking up in, in what was then my new apartment and then just taking a walk around the block. It was like seven in the morning, I was by myself. And I feel like I've been on foot ever since. You know, even though like I, I rent cars and I drive and stuff like that, but I love walking. It's like no matter where I go, I was in you know Colorado last week. Ooh, sorry, <laughs> that that's a love for an instrument right there. I was ready to bite it. Just thank you. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't care. I have a bloody face, but not that. Um, but 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 walking around, I just walk everywhere. And um, and again, being from Brooklyn, one of the things that we learned as as kids was don't look up. Right, like we were, who, well, who looked up in New York? People who weren't from New York, tourists. And what happened to tourists? So people who weren't from New York, they became victims. So I was from, I was from this era where, you know, we saw people looking like this. Oh, that person's about to get robbed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I never looked up. And then it's like I came home, and 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 I was in, in like, you know, I was downtown. I was looking at the Freedom Tower going up, and I'm just like, and I walk around now, man, and I look up all the time. And even though this is my home, I love feeling like a tourist in my own home. So what, what, what did I take for granted? I think I, I, I took for granted every step. You know, now, now I, I just try to pay as, as much attention as I can without, you know, getting hit by a car or, or hurting somebody on a bike, you know. But, um, but yeah, I, mean, I, just, I just try to walk and, and look and pay attention and, and embrace that wonderment, that, that sense of awe. You've been uh, exposing on your journey of how you know you're one person and then a different person possibly after prison. How do you feel your connection uh, to the art from an er your earlier part of your life to the art you make now? Do you feel a difference of connection? How you relate to the music or your art in general? I think that and I appreciate the question first and foremost. I want to before I answer the question, I want to I want to state something. I am not, I am not a different John Forte in 2015 than the John Forte who was sentenced to 14 years in federal prison in 2001. I am still John Forte, but I will not be defined by, by what I did in 2001. I think it's it's, it's a very very easy cop out to be like, oh that was me. I'm a completely different person. No, you know what? I was I, I was an asshole who made like a ton of mistakes and and, and who who believed his own hype. And, 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 and paid that price. Um, you know, I, I, it was a heavy price. Some may say that, well, he didn't pay enough. Um, but I'd like to think that I learned from that. Uh, and I'd like to think that every day is an opportunity to learn from every previous day. Good, 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 bad, or indifferent. Um, as far as how I connect to, 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 to my art and, and my music and, and my, my filmmaking, <laughs> It's so vital to, to me right now that I, I probably understated what life would be like without art. I, I can't imagine life without, without art or the chance to create media. Um, and I also took that for granted, and I, th I think at the height of, of, of my commercial success, because I expected to win, I expected to influence. Um, now I don't I don't have that expectation anymore. I think that if anyone shows up to hear me talk or sing for five seconds, that that is an absolute blessing. And the fact that it's been almost 20 minutes and you guys are still here, I'm not even I'm not even blowing smoke. I'm I'm not. I swear to God, may I die right now if I don't if I don't relish and and, and cherish and appreciate the very opportunity of of being able to stand before you and to call myself an artist. I'm a 40 year old artist, like I make art. That shit is cool as hell. Like I get up every day, I get to make art and I don't take that for granted, so thank you. So you mentioned this idea like every seven years, this idea of like losing control and stuff. And I Well, no, we all, no, 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 things shifting. Things I'm not, shifting. not, not, not necessarily losing shifting. control, but I'm talking about like catalytic shifts yeah. happening every second. I'm like, oh. 
yeah, the, okay, the shifting, the yeah. shifting happens. And yes. for me, like, yeah, you, you have those times. And I suppose it's how do you, uh, how do you take a sense of control in those, in those, those times? You don't. Uh, yeah. That's the beauty of it. You don't. It's like you, if you don't allow yourself to let go, to just, to just succumb to the forces of the universe and, and, and to nature, and then, you, then that's not living. Because, or at least that's not, in, in my opinion, that, that's not living honestly. Whenever I drive or whenever I'm flying, like life, all we can do is put our best foot forward. We can put our best foot forward. But beyond that, we can't control it, we can't micromanage it. But so, so, so yes, so, so for me, in my experience, every seven years there's just some catalytic shift and I'm going through it right now. It's not good, it's not bad, I, I think that, so I'm not getting caught up in the judgment of what's happening because what's happening is going to happen regardless of whether I think it's good or bad. But I am responsible for my actions, my words, my deeds, and all I can do is just put my best foot forward. And in that, whatever happens, I can just, you know, that's how I wake up in the morning and that's how I go to bed at night. I put my best foot forward. Um, it's not always going to be the best, I mean, it's not always going to be the best, uh, the best result, but, but I will put my best foot forward. I don't know, that's how I handle it. Thank you very, very much. Wow.